hit record. And um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Peggy Kim. If you, if I, I know Alyssa, uh, because Alyssa, you were, you were welcome officially to Future Now. Um, Future Now Media Foundation, it is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that I founded about five, six years ago. And it's all about building future leaders coming into media and entertainment. And so we put on a yearly conference. Um, it usually happens the, the week after the Memorial Day weekend. And so this year it will fall uh, June 1st, 2nd and 3rd, which is a Wednesday through Friday. And we focused on three main areas of media, which is the content of media, business of media and technology of media and um, my, you know, I come from the industry. Uh, I had a long corporate career. I started out at ABC News and then went to um, ABC Sports, NBC Sports, the Olympic unit, and then CBS News Productions and moved more into from news into long form documentary programming and was a producer, writer, once a producer, writer, always a producer, writer, but producer, writer, director, and um, executive producer. And then I was a programming executive at the History Channel for many years. And I had um, shows like uh, Digging for the Truth, which was an archaeology adventure series. I, that was a hit series for the network and really brought in more women to the History Channel, younger people to the History Channel. And it was a, it was a big success for the network. And one of the things that I'm most proud of in terms of my body of work. So hopefully you can catch some of that. I think you can I think it's on um, some streaming platforms and you might even be able to catch some bootleg version on, on YouTube, but it was an excellent series and a lot of fun. Um, um, but really the, the uh, you know, and I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I'll walk quickly through this background slide that Nico was kind enough to put up here for me. So um, had a lot of experience in the in major media companies and also international experience working at, in Poland and Germany. Um, I did my undergrad uh, degree at Williams College in political science and focused on uh, Soviet East European studies and studied Russian and also um, later studied Polish and, and German as well and then Spanish prior to that. Um, and I did my master's in international affairs at Columbia University thinking I was gonna go work for the UN and instead got pulled back into broadcasting and the rest is history as they say. But really the, the reason why um, Future Now is something that I felt compelled to build was because over the last, uh, you know, at this point it's like the last seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, um, as I was building my other company, I Stand TV, I was working very closely with college students. And as I was working with them and, and learning about them, um, I was like, why? I was discovering that they were having a lot of the same issues that I had when I started out. And I didn't have connections. I didn't know, I didn't understand kind of the ecosystem of the industry. Um, I didn't have mentors. And um, it was very, very difficult for me to connect in. And I, I connected into the industry out of sheer persistence um, and doggedness and, um, and resourcefulness. And those are all skills that I am so glad to have developed um, that muscle for. But I'm kind of like, well, those are great things to develop at any given time. But there are certain things that I was like, there must be something systemically wrong <laughs> if students are having the same issues that I had when I started out and now at this point 30 years ago. So really the my heart for future now and my heart for students is to now leverage my 30 years of experience in the industry, the relationships that I have built in the industry over that time and leverage that to help the next generation and next generations coming up behind us. Um, you know, a lot of times we, you know, we hear about Oscar so white and, you know, the, la the lack of diversity on screen and, you know, how do we fix that? Because I love the industry, but the industry has, you know, issues that it's, it's not 
been able to um, deal with in a successful way. And so Future Now is my attempt to help address some of those issues and help develop that pipeline of talent that would be you guys um, to access the industry, build relationships, have a better understanding about the industry, the opportunities that are there and the things that you don't know because you know, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. And so how do we help kind of break that down for you guys and help also connect in, build your professional networks while you're still in school so that by the time you're ready to graduate, you have people that you can actually reach out to and have meaningful um, connections with. So that's me, that's future now. Um, Nico, if you wouldn't mind uh, going to the next slide. So I mentioned the conference and Alyssa and Nico both came through the conference. So when we get to the conference part, I, I would love for you know, both of you to kind of speak into it, your experience of it so that you can, so Alicia and, and Lance could have um, a better understanding of what, what they can expect and, and why you love it. Because I'm assuming you love it, that's why you're here. Um, but in addition to that annual conference, we do monthly leadership talks. These are um, uh, one hour opportunities to hear from our executives and, and professionals in the industry and then have, you know, have time to interact with them and then follow up with them uh, to, again, network. Um, and you would do that via LinkedIn, or if they wanted to, they felt comfortable, they could just, they, a lot of them actually share their email addresses during the talk. Um, we do meet the recruiters events. We have one coming up next week with Spectrum Reach and Spectrum Networks. And um, Nico, if you wouldn't mind taking, copying and pasting those event bright links that I had sent to, um, that I had posted when Alicia, Alicia was on by herself. I think we have to do that again for otherwise people who jump in new don't get to see the previous chat stuff. Um, but we have a meet the recruiters events coming up. We have workshops, professional skills workshops. Um, we do speed mentoring sessions also. Um, uh, can you go back, Nico? Back to the slide. Yeah, uh, we have a formal mentoring program for, and that's um, that formal mentoring program is a nine month mentoring program, um, which is available particularly to future now alumni. And so once you come through the conference, you are considered a future now alum and those alums are able to um, apply to be a part of the formal mentoring program and then hopefully um, when, if they're selected, they go through a nine month mentoring relationship with somebody from the industry. And, <clears throat> and then uh, we, we highlight uh, mentors and mentees from the program at the conference. And the mentee is actually interviewing their mentor in front of the, the, you know, the, the audience on the platform. We also have a, a lot of amazing volunteer opportunities, and this would be one of them. As a campus ambassador, you are considered volunteers. And so the volunteers are especially near and dear to my heart because this is the way for me to get to know all of you. Um, as volunteers, I get to know your work ethic, your work quality, um, your character, your integrity. And then uh, when recruiters actually come to me, um, they're like, you know, we're looking to, we have several spots for this, that, and the other opportunity. Do you have people that, you know, in addition to just blasting it out to the Future Now community, do you have people that you would recommend? And my first go-to are the volunteers, because those are the ones that I can actually speak to and, and provide recommendations for and references for. So um, that's one of the uh, big perks of also being a campus ambassador. And then we have a Future Now Media podcast. This is an opportunity. You can go to the Future Now uh, conference website. You can access um, all the information, but the podcast also is an opportunity for you to hear about, hear the sessions from previous confer conferences and previous um, leadership talks, et cetera, because we take all of our event programming and turn them, turn them into podcast episodes in addition to doing original podcast episodes. All right, so if you wouldn't mind moving to the next. 
And so without further ado, I am really, really uh, excited to introduce Nico Schulke to you. Um, Yvonne hopefully will be joining us shortly. She had another work uh, engagement that prevented her from joining us at five, but hopefully she'll be able to join us around 5.30. So um, Nico came through the Future Now conference last year and um, is it's just been awesome in, in working with Yvonne to put these presentations together and we'll be co-directing with Yvonne um, this year's Campus Ambassador Program. So without further ado, Nico, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and taking us through to the next step. Sure thing, Peggy, thank you. Um, hi guys, how are you? Um, as Peggy said before, my name's Nico and I attended the, um, the Future Now conference last year along with um, Melissa. And it's a little bit about my background. Um, I am the unscripted um, office production assistant for BBC Studios Americas in Los Angeles. I'm also a first uh, generation grad student at Southern New Hampshire University online. And I'm originally from San Diego, uh, San Diego California. And a few uh, fun things about me. Um, I love comic book movies and streaming uh, content, both linear and, you know, of course, um, on, uh, on streaming. And I love chocolate milk and I'm, I'm huge. Um, huge part of, uh, about me is, is family and it's, uh, it's it's very important and my other colleague Yvonne ho hopefully will be joining us later today um she is a paid research associate at Densu and she's also the uh, the um chief um operator and uh, hunter college graduate double majoring in media studies and psychology she is from east harlem new york and she loves um chocolate chip cookies books and best friends yeah, ch chocolate is a theme here <laughs> So just a little um, a little um, quick intro into the program. So let me just minimize, minimize my screen here for a second. So if you are passionate about the media and entertainment industry, as Peggy and I are, involved in your campus and looking to build your resume, looking to improve your network and marketing skills, um, interested in working with the team, are motivated and outgoing, but also you need to be reliable and committed, then this program um, is right for you and a great way to start off um, the year and learn um, leadership skills and also learn more about yourself um, as a whole. Yeah, I want to just touch on something, Nico, that you just said. If you're outgoing, it's a lot easier. But if you're an introvert, like like I have tended to be, it's still a great experience because um, I am an introvert by by nature and extrovert by necessity. <laughs> so if I can do it, you can do it. So don't don't if you feel like you're an introvert, don't be intimidated by the opportunity we definitely um will help you through so no worries yeah she absolutely she's absolutely right um i'm also an introvert but i'm also an extrovert i've been told i have like kind of like that kind of dual mentality old soul kind of thing so it shouldn't be too much uh, of an issue for all of you but um, yeah, so just a few uh, main responsibilities of a future now um, campus ambassador are really about uh, five um, main categories. One is to um, for you to represent future now and sharing its missions and values with students on campus, and also about um, coordination. You know, coordinate with clubs, professors, or career services, and other campus outlets. You know, to get the word out about a conference. And you will be the uh, be the point of contact for students, professors and really anybody else who has questions. And it's all about participation. So you put as much into being a campus ambassador um, as much as you get out of it um, for yourself and also just for you to enjoy the conference and the experience. And we also have um, an accountability uh, checklist and it's also important to meet deadlines. And we also will host um, monthly check-ins um, just to see where you are in your progress on how many um, you know, uh, conversations or meetings you've had to um, clubs and professors or just um, your internal network about future now. So you're probably asking, um, who are uh, campus ambassadors of future now? Well, campus ambassadors are the leaders that will represent future now's mission through community outreach and social initiatives on your campuses. And the main goal is to bring awareness of future now and our future now um, media conference and to share about upcoming events and program offerings via different avenues, um, especially since we're um, remote um, through social media, um, career services, club fairs, and activities. And the biggest thing that we would love to share um, with attendees and with you 
is to get um, fellow students to apply for our Future Now Media Entertainment Conference. Yeah, so this is the big push. I mean, we want students to come through all of our programming and events, which are, again, they're free to students. Um, but the big thing is to do the recruiting for the, for the conference. And so the conference, um, perhaps, you, I don't know what the next slide is, Nico, but maybe go to the next one. Yeah, so this is just a little bit more on what Nico had already said on about the checklist of tasks and, and you know, so we'll with the future now will generate social posts, all you have to do is share them and tag us. Um, you get permission from your prof to share a future now in front of your class, maybe you do a brief, you know, 15 minute presentation via zoom either with your class or, you know, clubs or, you know, whatever group that you want to bring together, um, you can do that. And then, um, well, you know, there's a point system to help track your progress. So you know how you're doing, we know how you're doing, and, and everybody's kind of on track. Um, but the next one, Nico. Okay. Uh, do you want to... I feel like we should talk about the conference and then come back to this. So maybe go to the yeah. next slide. Sure thing. Okay, so the, the conference. So the conference, it's three days. It's this year, it'll be June 1st to the 3rd. And, you know, because of where we're at with COVID, it's going to be online again. But the idea is that the conference itself will be virtual, but then um, over the summer months and into the fall, we will do regional events in New York, LA, and the Atlanta area. That's the, that's the plan at this point. And so um, it'll be easier for those students who might be closer to Atlanta to get to Atlanta and meet with recruiters from Atlanta, from industry professionals in Atlanta. Those who are on the West Coast, it might be easier to go there as opposed to flying all the way to New York and et cetera. So the plan is virtual conference and then follow up with regional events in New York, Atlanta and, and LA. And so the breakdown of the conference itself um, the day one, we focus primarily on the content of media, day two on the business of media, and day three on the technology side of the media. The second half of each of those days are going to be focused on more of the professional development and networking part. So, um, for example, day one, we'll do, we'll cover the content, state of the industry, and then the second part of the part of the day we'll do professional skills workshops that will help you then prepare into day two because the second half of day two will we will be doing speed mentoring sessions with um, executives so you have a chance to each student will have a chance to um, interact with anywhere between three to six uh, mentors in in that part of the conference and then day three we will have more info sessions with recruiters. Um, so last year we had AMC Networks, Disney, um, I wanna say Google, uh, a and &E Networks, Spectrum Reach Spectrum Networks, uh, the New York City Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, and um, there's probably a couple that I'm forgetting, but those sessions are also, those are on day three and those recruiters, are people that you want to connect with because you know a lot of times you guys are applying for stuff and it goes into this black hole <laughs> you don't know are is my resume being seen will i ever get a call back and more likely than not um you, you, you're probably never going to hear anything because what happens with the process, and we have a session on this at the conference too, where the recruiters are actually, uh, we have a recruiters tell all panel, which is probably one of the most important panels at the conference where the recruiters will give you the real dope, you know, real how it works on their end to give you the inside track on understanding, oh, that's what I need to do because this is what actually happens. And so <clears throat> um, knowing who the recruiters are, are like half the battle because you can always follow up with them via LinkedIn or if you have their email, you can follow up and track, hey, um, I submitted my application, blah, 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 and da, da, da. And then you build that relationship at the conference or throughout our programming throughout the year. 
and so that when you're ready to apply for something you've got somebody who you can reach out to so everything is designed to help you succeed as students as future leaders and you are considered future leaders you are future leaders you don't may not feel like it right now but you are future leaders in in the industry um, so the programming of the conference, keynotes, panel discussions, workshops, speed mentoring sessions, info sessions with recruiters. Um, and then uh, Nico, I wanna go to the next slide. Okay, so let's, so the application. So here's the process for the conference. The conference is not just a, hey, register and show up. You actually have to apply to be a part of this conference. And so that application is in four parts. It's your resume, 500 word essay about why you wanna pursue a career in media and entertainment, a work sample and a recommendation letter from your professor or employer. Your application materials not only get you into the conference, but your application materials get turned into an e-talent portfolio that then gets shared to all of the recruiters and all of the sponsoring companies that attend the conference. So again, this is designed for your resume to not just go into some black hole, but now you've shown up, you've been part of the conference, you've, you're now part of this Future Now community. Recruiters have your information and then it's a, it, it, you have the opportunity to interact with them during the conference, either during the speed mentoring sessions or in the chat or following up via LinkedIn um, or via email if they provide you their emails. Um, so again, it is, it is designed specifically so that it gives you the best chance to succeed. Now I can build all this stuff and tell you, here's the tr trough of water but you still have to drink. <laughs> so the responsibility is for you to take advantage of all of the opportunities that is being provided so that you are making the meaningful connections. And so that e-talent portfolio is where all of your application materials go in and then gets shared. So there's a life beyond just getting you into the conference. It is used to um, help, help them with recruiting you, all right? Um, so the next process is once you apply, then you are accepted. And then we send you an email saying that you are accepted. And then we send you information on how to register because then it's the application, it's acceptance, and then it's registration. And so in the registration, um, there are, uh, you wanna go to the next slide on that, that one? <clears throat> These are some of the sponsors that have sponsored the conference. These are the sponsors from last year. And then FYI, uh, we have people like Tina Fey uh, who came and did a 45 minute uh, conversation with live with us. And um, hopefully we're gonna get somebody also super amazing for this year to do that with us again. But these are just, some, just a sampling of the companies uh, that came through the conference. Um, next slide, please, Nico. All right, so these are some of the dates that are important for you. And um, Nico, do you wanna do this? And then um, I'll take over the next slide, which discuss the registration process. Uh, yeah, sure thing. So um, just um, a few um, important dates because um, as, as Alyssa, uh, as, as um, you, you might remember, we had the conference um, in, in May um, and we also started in the fall, but right now we are, um, for all those new here, we're starting now um, in the winter and spring. So it's actually moving um, pretty fast. Um, if you did not know this already, but as of January 5th, the application has already been open on our Future Now website and you are more than um, welcome to apply. And we and we also have some of our monthly check-ins from January until June. March 1st is our um, application deadline. And on April 30th, we have our early bird um, registration May 14th is our is a regular registration, then May 24th, which is about less than two weeks later, it's our late, it's our late registration, all leading up to uh, June 1st through the 3rd for our conference. And after the conference, we will have our post-conference um, follow-up with um, each of you who decide to become campus ambassadors to see what worked, um, what didn't, and for any feedback on how we can improve um, for next year. Yeah. So the application deadline is March 1st, and 
um, the one of the perks, and we'll go backwards in, shortly, but uh, one of the perks for the campus ambassadors is that fee is completely covered for you guys. So it's the conference is free, but I would still want all of the campus ambassadors to go through the application process. You will be accepted, but I would say go through that application process because again, you want to be included in that e-talent portfolio. And so you want to put your best foot forward. The recruiters are going to look at it. So make sure your resume looks good. Make sure you're writing a great essay that goes to your why. Um, make sure that you have somebody who's uh, going to speak well, well of you for your recommendation. And then submit a work sample that you're proud of. And that work sample can be anything. It could be a video. It could be an article, a blog, podcast, a marketing deck. If you're a business major, maybe it's like you know some uh, you know pitch deck that you had created, but something that shows that so your connection into the industry somehow, like your expresses demonstrates your interest in the industry. Um, in terms of who we, you know, who we should be targeting. It's people who are truly passionate about in the industry. I don't care what their majors are. Their majors can be anything. It does not need to be a media major. You could be a nursing major and decide like, you know what, I don't want to be a nurse. I want to go into media, but you still have to just show like what you've done to express your interest in media. Right. So if you're a nurse and you're like, you know, I really, I, I'm doing this, but I, it's not what I want to do but I've been doing all these YouTube videos, I've been doing makeup tutorials, or I've been doing, I've been writing about media or blah, blah, blah. So just to keep that in mind, because you, if you decide that you, you definitely want to come in and join us as campus ambassadors, these are, this is information that you're going to have to share with your, with your peers on your campus. So I just want to share that with you so that you are aware. Um, Nico, can you move forward on this one? Okay, so there there is a fee once you once you are once you've applied and then you've been selected. There is a registration fee. So the fees are broken down in this way: ninety nine dollars for the first forty people who apply and are accepted to attend. They are considered future the top forty future now leaders. They get a preferred uh, rate of ninety nine dollars. Then for everybody else, um, if you if you uh, register by April 30th, it's 129. If you register by the 14th, it's 149. And if you register by May 24th, it's 199. Um, there is a fee also for those. There's on the registration fee. You will uh, registration form. You will also see an option. Hey, I intend to apply apply for a scholarship. There is a $10 fee for that. Okay, and so. All of this um, will be explained later, but I want to at least get you familiar with how this, how the process works. Re re you know, apply, be selected, then register. Now, for those for whom there is a 30% discount, COVID discount on top of these fees, so it's 99 plus a 30% discount. So if we'll provide a promo code for that, um, but even with the promo code, if for any reason, you know, the, the fee is still a financial hardship for somebody, um, apply for the scholarship and, and we have a 100% track record of uh, covering, providing the scholarship for anyone who applies. That scholarship application is a 250 word essay about what diversity means to them. And welcome, Yvonne. Great to see you. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Good, good, good. So we just, uh, we kind of jumped a little bit. So um, Nika, what's the next slide? OK, let's go back to the, the perks page. And then. Um, you mind you want to just say a few words about yourself Nico Nico did a great job kind of introducing you from that slide but you want to say a few words <laughs> and then perhaps you can do this benefits and perks page thanks Nico appreciate it and yes uh, welcome everyone I am here today I'm joining you from uh, future now media specifically for the campus ambassador program and 
I graduated from co-op and Hunter College and co-op in itself is a separate marketing program that um, I recently participated in. I also um, studied the, a double major in media studies and psychology. And there's many things, there are many things that I really love from books, which are among my favorite hobbies, uh, chocolate chip cookies, which I enjoy snacking on. And I also must have my uh, close friends with me. Uh, and I feel that that is something important for everyone, the human aspect of things. So welcome, just let us know if you have any further questions on the program. Yeah, so Yvonne, you wanna talk about the benefits and perks? Mm -hmm. So regarding the benefits and perks of the program, um, you uh, have free access to the uh, 2022 Future Now Media and Entertainment Conference coming up, specifically uh, starting June 1st through June 3rd. And uh, usually, as uh, I saw that Peggy was talking about, you do have to pay a fee uh, to attend. But for you, campus ambassadors, uh, it would definitely be for free. You would get special recognition at the conference. And there's also an official certificate that you would receive, along with industry exposure. And you're also awarded a good recommendation officially on your LinkedIn page, as well as being a top campus ambassador. If you are one, you will be honored and awarded a very special prize. And of course, last but not least, you would have exclusive group mentoring sessions with the founder and president of Future Now itself. That would be me. Yes, Peggy, <laughs> herself. Yeah, so uh, just quickly on the industry exposure, um, we do a spotlight feature about you on Future Now social media, which is followed um, by industry executives and professionals. So that's a great way, again, for our campus ambassadors to get, you know, some, some, get some exposure in front of the industry. So um, especially on LinkedIn, because that's huge for us. So, um, Nico, you want to move forward to the, the next slides that maybe we didn't do? Yeah, there you go. Do you want to take that one? Sure thing, of course. So, um, just a little, um, a little um, about what you can expect um, from being a campus ambassador. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the main thing is we are still remote um, in, in season three of COVID. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's, it's, I think it's very important to learn how you can <clears throat> expand the knowledge of Future Now remotely. And that includes um, conducting uh, Zoom info sessions with relevant classes that can be from your business management classes, entertainment, film, and TV radio classes, marketing, um, what have you. And also really to engage in email <clears throat> and talk to professors and career service um, reps about the conference and ask them, uh, ask them to pass information and important dates um, along uh, to their students. And if you will, everyone has their own internal, internal network. So we think it's very important to send email blasts to um, your fellow students and peers. And uh, you can even ask to do presentations about Future Now um, at their meetings and really uh, pitch it as an opportunity for them to fill an entire meeting um, for, um, well, well, just for you to pitch um, an entire meeting with the Future Now presentation and Q&A um, virtually, of course. And, we all know that um, every university has a school paper and a radio station. I know that I have a few friends who still work at my university's um, radio station, and you can never be um, too shy about really promoting um, the word, um, the word of mouth um, about Future Now um, through the radio, through the airways, and also through the school paper. And it can be really intuitive to really just do um, a small piece um, about Future Now. Yeah, so I want to talk about a little bit of the of the tracking. So again, the, the, the primary goal of the campus ambassador is to recruit for the conference. That's, that's the main priority. I mean, certainly get the word out about all of our other events that are, again, are accessible and free to, to students, but it's the conference that we really want to push. And so on the um, actual application, and maybe Nico, we can go to the website at this point. So if you go to futurenowconference.com, this is the new site and, and Nico's like 300 <laughs> tabs open on his browser. Uh, this is our new website. And then if you, you can scroll down Nico, just to show them what that looks like. 
So you can find out more about us, the podcast, the conference, the programs and events, volunteer and donate. And also if you go to the menu, which is in the top right corner, it also gives you an other abilities to navigate. So if you go to the conference first, up, oh, yeah. And then scroll down. This will give you more information about the conference. And then if you go to the, you can click on the apply now. It's above. Yeah, application form, you can go there, yeah. So who, who is eligible? All that information is there. It gives you information about the fees, the discount, the scholarship applications, et cetera. And then if you scroll down, Nico, so you'll see first name, last name, email, student year, that's a drop down. So uh, yeah, so it'll give you like all the different possibilities. Um, we want your phone number, the name of the school, how did you learn about us? And then if you were referred, so here there's an option, how did you hear about us? Future Now Campus Ambassador. So if you're a campus ambassador, you want to ask your, that your peers to please click on Future Now Campus Ambassador. And then here, if you were referred by a Future Now alum or campus ambassador, please tell us their name. And so we want them to, you know, they should say Alicia Rosado right there. Okay, so they should click on Future Now Campus Ambassador, Alicia Rosado, and then we'll track that. And so by the end of the program, by the time of the conference, I should be able to announce, you know, the top recruiter for the Future Now Campus, uh, Future Now, um, among the Future Now Campus Ambassadors, the top, re the top recruiters were, Alicia Rosado and Alyssa Harkness, who each uh, recruited 10 people from their campuses. Or, you know, if you want to take it even outside your campus, you've got other friends you want to bring in, that's totally cool too. Um, we just, we want you to recruit. So we want to recognize that also at the conference. And again, the top recruiter will get a special prize. And I think last year it was a $100 gift card to Amazon. So this application form is super easy. You upload your resume, you upload your 500 word essay. And then here um, you, you have a choice. You, can, you should definitely put the name of your professor or employer, their email and phone number, who will provide the recommendation letter for you. If you, have a, if you already have an actual physical letter that you can upload, you can put it there. Otherwise, what we'll do is um, we will email them a Google form, which is a recommendation form for you and ask them to um, fill, fill it out on your behalf. Okay, and then here you can upload a work sample file. If it's a huge file, like a video file, please just put that link that Vimeo, YouTube, whatever link into a Word document and then just upload the Word document. We don't want like massive files because that'll just break down the system. And then if you scroll down, there's a submit button. So that apply now is the submit button. Does anyone have any questions? No? Need more details on anything? Nika, did we go through all of the slides at this point? Uh, not quite. Let me just um, double check right now. Okay. So, so uh, after um, outreach on Zoom, it's it's a, it's a few more um, outreach like on social media and also um, on campus <clears throat> for those who um, have uh, in person classes. Did you want us to um, to touch base on those? I'm sorry. Say that again. Oh, I was asking if you wanted us to um, touch base on other ways of um, outreach. Yes, please. Okay. I don't know, Yvonne, if you want to do this one. Yep. So, of course, when everything uh, uplifts again and we can all meet in person, for any tips, 
connecting on campus with other students and peers, we definitely recommend asking your uh, club meeting members or actually your club leaders for permission first on presenting Future Now itself, whether it's at the beginning or at the end of a club meeting, as well as your professors, department heads, and career services departments, or as in Hunter's uh, case have been student career services um, or student activities for those that have them as well. You can also announce or present Future Now information sessions during classes, again, with your professor's permission. And this is all up to you and your professor. And there's also availability for tables and common spaces to talk to students, whether it's the hallways or um, any other um, event locations that you usually attend to. Of course, staying uh, safe from the pandemic as best as possible. We also um, recommend simple word of mouth to other students or peers. Um, I know that's how I found out about a lot of information um, back then. And even to this day, that's still a very um, pretty decent way to find information, uh, not just social media. And also get Greek life involved if it is available on your campus community. Yeah, so these are just some ideas. You might have different ideas. It may work differently on your campus. And it, maybe there's just like some huge bulletin board that everybody goes to. So if that's if that's like the main way that on your campus things get you know shared, then create a flyer, put it up there, um, you know, put your contact information so pe people can reach out to you. Or if you're an introvert, or if it's easier for you to just like go to person, go identify who the individuals are and just go to them person by person and just tell them, hey be a part of Future Now, This fill out this application and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's so many different ways to do it. These are just some ideas that we wanna provide to you, but you might have better ideas and different ideas that are more relevant to your particular campus and situation. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, but you're, you're right. These are all just uh, general like um, suggestions and ideas. They're not really like guidelines of you have to do this, but um, you know, just uh, little um, little uh, sprites of ideas. But um, I mean, concerning about um, outreach, especially on social media, we, we're all on social media. I know uh, from my tabs, you saw I have like four different LinkedIn windows open. I always have my Instagram open because um, I, I do some business on that as well. So um, we are we um, have a huge suggestion on really utilizing those social media um, to your benefit and also to Future Now's benefit. And really, that's about posting um, on your own about upcoming Future Now events, um, either on your LinkedIn pages, um, Facebook, and um, Instagram stories. And we will have a campus ambassador of Future Now um, Instagram takeovers. And the the main goal is to really take over the Future Now Instagram account for the day, so people can really get to know you both on a personal and professional level. And uh, we will actually create the social media posts to add to your stories and post on, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, what have you. And um, really to think flyers and count on the stories um, for um, upcoming important dates. And the biggest thing that we have found uh, really um, both uh, creatively and intuitive to really get the word out for our meetings and for the conference is um, through LinkedIn groups and um, for a few now um, on Facebook groups. And you can tell people in any Facebook related group that you are in and about Future Now. And you can also you can always uh, recruit um, through those channels. And the biggest thing that we want to really um, push and renewer is to be creative. You know, try to work in, in Future Now into, um, er, into um, everyday, everyday stories. I know on our Future Now um, Instagram posts, um, we recently uh, posted about, um, about uh, the the Golden Globes or uh, the recent um, uh, nominations for the WGA and um, and the SGA. It's really um, to try to make this um, not too professional per se. This is professional, but also just to really um, integrate it into your own stories and into um, other people's um, suggestions of likes, really. And there's many tips to get started on. And of course, all to your own preference. You can look through the Future Now website and make sure you have a good understanding of what the organization does, what's the mission, what we do, et cetera. And you're also free to ask Nico, myself, or Peggy any questions that may arise. You can also start your practicing your presentation skills, uh, getting comfortable talking to people about Future Now through Zoom presentations. And if you need practice, we're happy to help you guys out. 
Um, also be professional, of course. I remember that you represent the Future Now Conference anytime you talk about it, mm -hmm. uh, looking presentable on video calls and just a simple background, the usual norm, uh, checking your spelling and grammar. And uh, stated before, just ask for help at any time, no matter how small the question may seem. Yeah, and we also just want to um, really um, encourage uh, um, well, you guys here to um, uh, to stay to stay connected. Um, you can follow us on, on Future Now um, MF on Instagram and Twitter, Future Now Media on Facebook and LinkedIn. And um, Peggy, myself, and Yvonne, we, we're all on those platforms. Um, so you can always just uh, reach out to us via LinkedIn um, or, or or Instagram, as long as you have um, their permission, I guess. And um, yeah, just to really um, if you have any questions, any kind of uh, advice. Um, you want to ask us or things that you weren't really um that you aren't really sure about you know just um feel free to reach out we all have an open open door policy you know that term is going to probably be dead dead in the water in a couple like years or months but um we really just want to um push and encourage um connection yeah so if you are definitely interested we would definitely love to have you um, and if you could let us know by the end of the day tomorrow, that would be incredibly helpful for us because the time is um, short and that March 1st deadline is coming upon us pretty quickly. So if you could uh, and email us and let us know, <clears throat> well, we'd really appreciate it. So that email fnambassador at gmail.com. And then a second email also you can uh, you, where you can reach me is futurenowconference at gmail.com. Okay. Um, Alyssa, you, 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 you've experienced the conference. Um, could you, what was your experience of the conference like just so that Alicia, Alicia could have a little bit more color on the experience? Well, I mean, obviously you get some really great networking. Uh, you get to talk to all the recruiters and there are separate sessions where you get to talk specifically to some of them, which is really cool. But for me, I think connecting with people who are in the same boat as me was more like helpful. Obviously recruiters are great, but knowing that people were in the same situation of trying to break into the industry is is a really relieving feeling to like have that group of support, which is really great. And obviously mm -hmm. Tina Fey was very cool to, <laughs> to have a guest headline essentially. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful program. Awesome. How have you been staying in touch with your peers? Uh, I actually have never had as many LinkedIn connections as I do now. I think I'm almost to 300 or so. Um, and so a lot of them, I get to see um, like their new progress. A lot of them graduated, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, they're taking on new industry roles or internships and I get to congratulate them or they see me updating my job and experience and they'll do the same for me, which is really cool just to be able to kind of message them on LinkedIn. And I think I got a lot of Instagrams as well. So you get to see some of the more creative sides like that. Okay, awesome. Um, Alicia, do you have any questions? I do. Um, I just wanted to know if in terms of like the flyers and the social media posts, would that have to be pre-approved before I'm able to like post it on like, let's say like the school's story or on like the poster wall? You know what? That's a great question. It would be good for us to just look at it super fast. And um, are you on Slack by any chance? No, I'm not. You're not. What, what would be the best way to like contact you? Is it text? Um, either text, email, um, group me. I have that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would be, I don't want to mess around with people's designs, but I want to make sure that the content is accurate. So mm -hmm. maybe if we just, um, on the first couple ones that you would create and send out that we would we would just like look at it and be like, okay, you got it, you got this. And, and then we don't have to keep checking in that way. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I would say the most important thing um, is the information. Okay. And then I had like a another follow up. Um, oh, sorry, say that again. I had another follow up question. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I'm I'm promoting future now and the application is there, I feel like in some situations people would be like, oh, like can I have like your credentials or you know, am I supposed to show them something? Let's say if I don't have a poster but I'm promoting the program, um, will I be given something to show like you know this is a program, it's legit, it it helps a bunch of students who just want to put who just wants to get their foot in the door in the industry. Um, so what, so what are you asking for? Like what you have something in mind already? Like, no, no, no. So I'm saying like, um, is there like a proof that yes, I am an ambassador? Like, are we given any sort of, um, credentials? Oh, um, um what would be helpful in that situation? That's a great question. I mean, you can just put down future now campus ambassador. And then if you, you know what, here's the thing. So if you send me all of the future now campus ambassadors and Nico and you, Yvonne, I'm just coming up with this now. So it's going to be new to you guys, but all of the future now campus ambassadors, we should have everybody send in their headshots and a short bio. And we'll, I'll put that up on the website. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. That way you guys can point to it and say, hey, look, I'm a future now campus ambassador. It'll be under the, um, it, I'll probably put it under the campus ambassador page. I don't know if we have that capability right now. So I'd have to go back to our um, developers to ask them to put that in there. Um, and then we can, we can that, that'll be your legitimacy. Um, stamp or whatever however you want to say it does that make sense yes okay that's good that's a great question and i think that's how we'll solve the problem so it'll be a headshot and like a very brief you know 100 word max kind of um bio okay cool yeah okay Alyssa, did you have any questions i think i'm good as of now i i'm i have a lot of ideas <laughs> Yes, that's what, we need. <laughs> awesome. that's what we need. All right, so the next steps and um, Nico, Yvonne, and uh, if, you, if you guys can actually stay on after we jump off, um, the next step should be that uh, if you are definitely in, please email Nico and Yvonne and just use both emails. So Nico and Yvonne should be the fn ambassador at gmail.com. I put it in and the just, chat for everyone just in case. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, just copy future now conference at gmail.com, which I will I, I will respond to. And then just let us know, yes, I'm in. I want to do this. And then uh, we'll follow up with you because we'll probably need to have um, either a separate session or something to give you guys some tools and guidelines. All right, and then share the checklist of materials because there will be a checklist of just like the minimum things that we, we really would like you to do and then everything else that you wanna do and then we'll create a point system. So if you've done the checklist and now, now you're going above and beyond like I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z because I really wanna get that you know, industry exposure and 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 be and win the prize and rec be recognized for it. We would we would absolutely love that. So there will be a checklist, minimum requirements, and then everything else is gravy and cherry on top. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. I I hope you say yes. <laughs> So we look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thank you. Okay, nice to thank you. you. Nice to meet you too, Alicia. Have a good evening. So great to see you. Bye. Bye. Yes. Bye.